All right, welcome to the uh, Forced Perspective Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we brought our smallest friend on today. Just kidding. Um, this is friend of the show, a longtime friend of mine, Rick. Uh, Hola. And of course, Nona. This is, um, as always, completely unscripted. So bear with us as we uh, don't know what we're doing, as everybody says in the comments. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Not know what you're doing. Yeah. So, Rick, tell us about the. Uh, Superior team right here. <laughs> well, what I can tell you is that this tastes like shit. In this huggy, it probably would be better if it was out of it. Did you call it a huggy? Yeah, huggy. What do you call it? Uzi. What do you call it? Yeah, where are you from? I've never heard anybody call it a huggy. New Jersey. Huggy. Hugs a can. We always call it a koozie. Yeah, I've, I've never heard anything mm -hmm. different. Huggy. Hugger. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, if you need to, the armor is adjustable. No, I'm good. I'll, 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 I'll win a little bit. I don't want no one to feel like um, she's a giant and I'm a tiny. I feel so large. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, man, I just completely lost my train of thought. <coughs> finally, good to have you on the show. You finally That's got right. permission from the wife. I finally did. Yeah. I finally did. The schedule's worked out, so it's nice. Took you, took you a little while. <laughs> See, things are worth waiting. See, that's the difference in the relationship dynamic between you and your wife and Nona and myself is that Nona's like, he's just going to do whatever. I'm going to try and give my input, but he's not going to listen to me at all. I do a little bit. I listen a little bit. Well, I will say that uh, we've been married like almost 20 years. And so I used to just, you know, didn't work out good. So now I'm like, I'm a little more tame. Tame. So you, do you think, you think in, 18 years, that's where I'll be? Yeah. Do you think I'll be that way in 18 years? No. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to change. What, um, ever. what age did you guys get married? Um, let's see. I was uh, 27. She was 33. How old are you now? Oh, wait. I'll, I guess that... I'll be 48 and she'll still be 27. <laughs> I was going to say... I thought you were the math but, expert. What? Man. Like my ADD meds wore off like 30 minutes ago. Sure. And now yeah, and now I'm at that point in the day where I'm like, who am I? Where am I? That's probably better though. <laughs> that's more entertaining. Yeah, that's true. Questioning your reality, that's entertaining. No, not question and actually for whatever reason, for like the past three days have been like super clear headed. Like my mind has been super clear without having to do like the whole hyper focus thing. Yeah, just just out of nowhere, it was just, I woke up the last couple of days in the morning, not feeling groggy, which is unusual. And maybe it's the pressure from the storm coming. <laughs> maybe. Squeeze the head or something. Yeah. Maybe. So, and then go to bed with a clamp on my head. And yeah. <laughs> she would love that. It's worth a shot. <laughs> She'd sit there and turn it tighter every night, just a little bit. I don't so, believe that. I do. I don't so. Um, so, yeah, man. So, Literally just got off work. You came straight here. I did. Mm -hmm. I changed my shirt, Paul. I changed my shirt. That's nice. You're welcome. What is MU? Michigan University? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's a Notre Dame fan for one that hasn't picked up on it. I would not have an Ohio State fan on this show. Unless they were presenting me an award for a bet. Oh, I was going to say, unless they bowed okay, down to you first. Well, that too, yeah. I will say, though, because I know how you feel about Notre Dame, mm -hmm. that you despise. You probably know the story, right, about the tickets. Mm -hmm. So everybody probably doesn't know what a, what a, a, a beautiful heart you have. <laughs> no. I try and convey it, but she's always like, no, no, no. No, I can say for sure. Yeah, because we worked together um, at a car dealership years ago. It's 16, 17. It's, it's, yeah, it's literally almost been a decade already. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. my grandfather had passed away, and uh, Andrew here went and got Notre Dame tickets for me. And uh, we went up to, four of us went up to South Bend for a trip to South Bend to a Notre Dame game. So, to be clear, I didn't, the, the go, I didn't go and buy them, because um, I would never do that. <laughs> just, that, that his heart's not that big. <laughs> uh, family friend uh, who's a graduate had season tickets, and 
he typically offers them up to our family a couple at a time. You know, if nobody else is going to go or he can't go because he lives and he works for University of Washington. So in order for him to go to South Bend, that's that's six, cool. eight times a year yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just I hit him up. I was like, do you have anything available? And he's like, yeah, I do. And threw me a number. And then I told the sales managers and they're like, cool, we'll work on the lodging and stuff. I, they did do the lodging, right? Just not the transportation. Yeah, I, we drove up there. I couldn't, I couldn't remember all of it. I just remember tickets. Because you couldn't, were you able to refund your hotel or did you just change the date? Or how that work for you? Um, no, no, no. Th- those tickets, well, say I had, well, let me back up. I had tickets right. to a game right. and then we couldn't go. But I hadn't gotten a hotel yet. Gotcha. So those tickets I just had to eat. That sucks. Yeah. But he was like the Grinch that day. It's hard two sizes. <laughs> I love hearing stories like this about him. And then he proceeded to blast that place with the Google reviews. So we, were, it was, we went the opposite direction. But, but, but you know, I did it for the benefit of the consumer. So he did. And other employees. Right. Did so, anything positive happen after that? Does anything positive ever no. happen after I do anything? No. In fact, I think our lunches got worse. <gasps> um, free lunches. The lunches got worse. Oh, no. <laughs> it used to be good, man. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I haven't really, like, even introduced you that well. I just said you're a Rick. And you're a Notre Dame fan. But uh, you're, also, you're also well, you're also a former Marine. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many years did you serve in the Marine Corps? Four. Just four. That was enough. Were you already with your wife at that time? No, uh, no, no. We met after. We were. After. We've talked a couple times about. She's like, you should just go back in. And I'll stay here, and I'm like, I never oh, said you should go back in. I literally never said that. Yes, she has. I have said I think that you would have been a really good career military person had you never left. My first unit was trash, dude. I, I worked for the MPs. I was medic attached to an MP unit, and. Dude, like, when people talk about the MPs being Blue Falcons, like, they are the fucking worst. Not just to other soldiers, but even, like, within their own unit. And you know Joe Mazza, right? Mm-hmm. Joe was in that unit. That's how I met him. That was okay. 2007 is when I met him. Yeah. He, like, one of uh, maybe a dozen, 20-ish people that I still keep in touch with from there. The majority of the people... That I'm still friends with from there were not MPs. They were the other support MOSs and stuff in that unit. What uh, where were you stationed? I, well, I went to boot camp at Paris Island and then um, went to MOS school at uh, an Army base, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Was different. Artillery or no? Uh, well, working at the ammo dump, the ASP ammo supply point. I thought I was going in as an amphibious assault vehicle operator. I thought that's what I signed, but I didn't. I signed an open contract, apparently. The recruiter story is all this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what did you get? So I was an ammo tech, which was boring. Basically, uh, a gotcha. supply in the ammo dump. But we would have a good time because we would get on the forklifts. I was just telling somebody a story the other day. We would go on the way, very back of the ammo dump. And we would get on forklifts on pallets and raise them all the way up and then joust with broomsticks. <laughs> so, every 12 year old boy's dream dude, every yeah everybody in the military has the same like handful of experiences the shitty lying recruiter <laughs> the um weird nonsense that you do when you're like e2 e3 when you first get to here you know all the fuck fuck games and all the Changing your blinker fluid or finding a box of grid squares oh, and a thousand feet of flight what? line. Yeah. They're just they're just things that don't actually exist. There's a couple that are like, hey, go to the commander and ask him for this. And it's like you're basically telling him like fuck you. Be yeah. like a pricky eight form, yeah. a pricky nine form. <laughs> what happens if you say this is clearly bullshit? Nobody does. Yeah. No, no one ever and does. Wrong. Usually like <laughs> unless you have family. Or know somebody that yeah. served and they warn you ahead of time. You typically don't know these things. Gotcha. Yeah. So you go, going in blind. Yeah, you go through the hazing. You go through the fuck fuck games. And then you come out the other side, typically, unless you get an Article 15. 
as an E4. Okay. And then you become invisible at every opportunity. <laughs> you try and it's called we call it the the sham shield because the the uh, actual insignia for a specialist looks like a shield. Okay. E4 mafia. Yeah, E4 mafia. Basically, you're like the middle ground. You're like the one that the NCOs delegate to, but then you still have three ranks lower than you that you can delegate the task to. This is to. when you were running around with a blank piece of paper pretending like you had orders. Well, that was different. That was because <laughs> I worked in the command building. My office was like downstairs in the command building. And anytime I had to go upstairs for something, there's always somebody that were like, hey, hey doc, I need this. Or hey doc, do you have that PowerPoint slide for tomorrow? Yeah, like, hey doc, walk up there with a piece of paper, walk right past them. Just not even, even if they say anything to you, just don't say anything. They see the paper and they're like, okay, he's busy. I'll get to him later. And then they forget. Have you ever done it anything is, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going to say. It's, it's well known in the military. We walk around with a file folder. File folder. And if okay. you get a file folder and you walk quickly, no one will ever ask you to go through. It's like, oh, he's busy. Okay. okay. And you just keep moving. I made a post um, after I told you about that. And every branch had like their own version of it. The Navy had like a version where it's like some folder, like while they're on the ship that they had, if they had that folder, everybody knew not to fuck with them. Mine was a piece of paper. Everybody had like a thing. As long as you walk with a sense of purpose, just you can't be like mm -hmm, bobbing your head and like you're humming a tune in your head. You know what's <laughs> also funny is uh, I think, you know, people look at the military and like, oh, look at these patriotic people here, right? But when colors look like, you never saw people run to get indoors. Like sprint, just so you have to salute. God. So you probably don't know this. If you're on a military installation and you're in uniform and colors, so raising or lowering of the flag, okay. you're supposed to turn. Like if you're in a car, you're supposed to actually get out. Oh my God. Stop your, stop your car and get out and face the direction. So you're physically listening for the direction the music is coming from and just salute that direction because that's where the flag is. So just stop traffic. Yeah, all traffic stops. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the entire installation. I don't have time for that, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you, you get that warning. Yeah. That like, was it a five minute warning or something? Yeah. Was it five minutes? Yeah, or maybe 10. And it, you get that warning and you'd be like, oh shit. I want to be in a building or off phone <laughs> as fast yeah. as possible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I cannot imagine. Yeah. Solely so you'd have to salute. Yep. Another universal truth of the military. It's yeah. stuff like that I completely forget about until somebody brings it up. I'm like, oh my God, I've told you. <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I'm not nightmares. Like, <laughs> all the times. Dude, I remember um, uh, there's one road on Benning that, and it probably isn't like that anymore since they've developed it so much more since I got out. But it goes from like 15 to 25 to like 55 miles an hour because it just becomes nothing but woods until you get to Camp Rogers, which is where I was at. And the MPs would always sit there running radar the other way for people not slowing down. And I always knew that nobody else was going that direction. Anybody that was doing anything was gonna be coming the other direction. And there was like this big cresting hill. And so you could always kind of tell if there were vehicles coming from the other side and to know whether or not you actually had to stop or not. There's like so there's like a like a curve and like a cresting hill mm -hmm. so you kind of like see the other side and since there were so many trees you'd be like there no surprises there. yeah you you'd be trying to look and you're like okay okay nobody's there just keep driving I'm not gonna get out of the car I'm not gonna salute yeah, uh, yeah it was a good time those those were those were uh, fun times I sure. <laughs> Well, and, and that's not, my, but like I had a vastly different experience than, than people after me had because I was in the four years that nothing was happening. There was no conflicts going on, right? I came in right after Desert Storm gotcha. and like months after Somalia. And because I was in the inactive, in the uh, delayed entry program, so I did one year of inactive. When you sign a contract, it's, uh, like, it's eight years, four years active, four inactive. Okay. So if you start in a delayed entry program when you're 17, like your senior year of high school, then that counts as one year of an active time. Okay. So I got out August 26th, 
officially got out. August 26, 2001. Oh, my gosh. So I just missed the 9-11 call. Had wow. I not been in the entry program, I would have been called back for 9-11. Wow. I remember seeing a story. I think it might have been on... Um, it might have been on uh, Unsubscribe. Maybe not. I don't remember what it was. Somebody was talking about how they had joined and, like, shipped to basic training, like, four days before 9-11. So they were in basic, and they were like, oh. Fuck. Because they just buyer's remorse. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever consider continuing after um, 9-11? I thought about it, um, but at that point, like I was I was married to my first wife mm-hmm. and um, I already had two kids. I'm like, I don't I don't wanna roll out, but I did think about a contract. How old were your children at the time? Uh let's see, my daughter was born in ninety seven and my son was born in ninety nine. All right, math boy. He's looking right at you. <laughs> he was looking at you to do so math on that. 25 and 27? How old they were in 2001. Oh, two and four. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain's not a, braining. Well, when people ask me, the section must have shifted. It's yeah, such an apparently. obvious question. Because it's not dumping rain now. His brain is not braining. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. If, if, if somebody on the, like, some cracked out bozo on the street asked me, <laughs> hey, What's one plus one? I would look at them and be like, Who the fuck are you? Why, why are you talking to me? Is this like a fucking trick? Like, is it a candy camera? Like, I would, it would, it would make me stop for a moment and be like, Why the fuck are you asking me this? What kind of fucking. Would you start thinking of what answers would get you punched in the ball? Yeah. yeah. Like, what kind of mugging is this? Yeah. yeah. So, Rick, you've been married before mm-hmm. and now you're married to your current wife for 20 years. Yeah. So, what can you teach Andrew on how. To successfully be married Watch to me. <laughs> um, I could give you a little spiel about it. it's, it's compromised, but really, you just have to give up. <gasps> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You have to relinquish your balls. You have to be like, okay. <laughs> mm. but I do think at a certain point in time, you're like the stuff that used to be important, like. Stuff that you're like, I'm, I'm not giving in on this. Now you're like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. Mm. It's not worth fighting. Over. It's not. It's not worth fighting. I don't ever fight. I'm always calm. Oh, I'm my rejected. fucking God. That's the biggest lie. I'm a, I'm a giant teddy bear. Sweet biggest bird. lie. Yeah, biggest no. lie. He no, fights no. for the fun of fighting. Yeah. I feel like in some of the sales meetings that we had, you would um, argue just to argue. Yes. Stuff. Yes. And he does that yeah. in our marital life as well so i minored in philosophy and actually you know you know when you get those professors that are like i never tell anybody that they should major in the thing that i majored in but well, i had that kind of professor for philosophy he's like don't don't do this because you won't make any money and then one day he pulled me aside he's like you should consider you know majoring in a double majoring and i was like you just told the class that you're basically poor you're <laughs> <laughs> hey, got some money. Yeah, but um, no, I like I I enjoyed it. So like, I'm always critical of the way people say things, the word choice, the overall vocabulary, like all of it. Like I'm. Yeah, I've said from the beginning, you should have been a lawyer. Sure. I, I hear you. I feel like the one time it was something about what was for lunch on a Saturday. Please tell us the story. I have a real story. I, mean, I was like, and I said, I'm like, we're going to have chicken. And he was like, why are we not having pizza? And then I was a whole big thing. And I'm like, I'm thinking, there's no, there's no reason to say that. Everyone else is like, who cares? And then Andrew was like, why don't I have pizza? Why are you, why are you buying that? Hey, the, well, the, the one thing that I did introduce everybody to there on Saturday specifically was, uh, it was before YouTube TV became a thing. It was, um, fuck. They're, they, they're still around as like a streaming like Sling TV, I think is what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and it was. so they had like the projector in the meeting room. And so I brought my laptop in and I signed up for like a trial subscription or whatever for Sling TV. And so I would put college football in the projector in the meeting room while we're on because they didn't have. TV, like actual cable or gotcha. anything like that there this is before streaming because you cable. had to watch michigan i'm sure yeah exactly. i'm sure yeah 
And how long did you work there? Like two months? Probably. <laughs> well, the crime <laughs> might have been three. What's the, what's the training period? Do you remember? Uh, ten minutes. Yeah. I didn't really feel like a whole thing sitting doing. Well, yeah, when you still have a computer, yeah. once you're done with that, and they're like, "All right, all right, good luck, good luck to you." Yeah, yeah. don't fuck it up. Yeah, and of walk course, around lost in my. Do like what's this? And how long did you last there? Um, I was there, I think, a year, and then I went, and then I went back one other time. So where, I don't, where'd you go in the intermission between? Um, well, I went to Jeff Gordon for a while. Okay, which that was. So you stayed in cars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I was just gonna say there. There was a. I really lost my train of thought there on that one. You were asking him where he went. It doesn't matter. What else can it you? It was teach a funny him? story. <laughs> what else can you teach him? <laughs> you know what else is fun too? Test drives. Those are always a good. Yeah. Time. When you get like two old people up there, and they're and you're like, oh, I'm gonna fucking die back here. There were times when. <laughs> There were times when I actually stop sign. That's a stop sign. I would call somebody that I knew. Oh, I, I remember I was going to tell. Come back to that. But I would call somebody that I knew or whatever, and I'd be like, "Hey, um, send me a text that you like want to check out the new Mustang that we have in the lot." Oh something. my god! And then I would leave telling them, "Hey, my friends at work, but or like my uncle at the fire department, like wants to check out the car, but he can't leave the station right now." And then I would just drive and go like fuck off for an hour. Because I didn't want to be at the dealership all the time. I remember. So, I, anyways, what can you teach him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think he knows everything. Lame. You just think I don't apply. He's not going to apply. That's true. He's not going to apply. <laughs> Lame. Why? I'm a good person. He's a good person. <laughs> um. Well, shit. What uh? Yeah, she's like, she makes an awkward every time. Let me tell you this funny story from from uh, from Okinawa. Okay. Okay. The only NJP I ever got was in Okinawa. That's Article yeah. Fifteen, non judicial punishment. I don't I don't think that you've truly been in the military if you have not gotten an NJP. Did you ever? Yeah. Okay. Tell your story after he tells his. So, so I I made a, a friend from high school. Uh, we didn't go in on the buddy program. But we went in like a month apart, so he went what to Carousel. What does that mean, buddy program? Like you can go together, like you would go to boot camp together. Gosh. And some, fa- I don't know if there was back then, but there was there were phases when I went in where you got an additional bonus. It was like two or something like that if you gotcha. could convince your other friend from school to come. Peer pressure. Yeah. Cool. Make money off of. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I, I convinced him, but then he ended up going first. Oh. So, yeah. So he went like in July, I went in August. So we were on Paris Island together, but not in the same platoon. But it just happened to work out that we, everywhere after that, except for MLS school, because he was a combat engineer and then I was at Tech. We went to different MLS schools. But after that, we were at the same bases the rest of the time. So we were in Okinawa together. I was at the north end of the island on Camp Schwab, which is nothing is up there at all. And he was like towards the south end of the island at um, the air station, Fatima. And so we had this, uh, me and a couple guys in, in my unit had this big piece of shit van. The doors were held on with bungee cord and shoelaces. This is when you could still uh, get an Okinawan driver's license before the next group of Marines ruined it for everybody. Oh, no. Yeah, we couldn't drive in Korea. Yeah, yeah they, they can't. They can't leave the base almost now. But we would tie these doors and it wouldn't go over 35 miles an hour. So we would drive this thing all the way down. Took like an hour and a half, pick them up, bring them back up to Schwab like for the weekend, and we all hung out. Well, on the way back, he was like, I have to piss. And I'm like, I'm not stopping. This thing only goes 35. It's going to take us forever to get back. <laughs> it'll, it'll, we'll have to turn around and come back. That's how long it's going to take us. I thought guys can pee in bottles. Well, Isn't that literally the whole point of... That's what happened. So ah! I, I said, man, we're not, uh, we're not stopping. So there was a Boone's Farm bottle rolling around in the back, and I was like, this in the bottom. Yeah. So he does. Yeah. And then he puts it in the cup holder, and I'm like, get that thing out of here. So he goes up through the sun. No! And there's like woods, 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 trees, 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 nothing. And so he throws it. And there's woods, 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 gas station, woods, 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 and it goes right through the window of a parked car. And I'm oh, like, fuck. Oh, shit. And 
I'm like, I'm not stopping. We're in Okinawa. Like, oh the God. Japanese police over there don't carry guns. They'll just beat the shit out of you with a stick. Oh, shit. So I'm like, no chance I'm stopping. So we're going. And a car passes, of course. Somebody walking would have passed us. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, so we get up to the gate of Schwab, and there's that car. There they are out there talking to the um, cam guard. And, oh, and like, man. So anyway, they get us out of the out of the truck. They separate us. This is exactly what they said to me. Did you throw the bomb? No. He didn't ask me if I knew who did throw right. the bomb. He asked me if he threw the bomb. So, no. So I got NJP for a false official statement. And during the hearing with the captain, I'm like, but sir, I didn't. They asked me a specific question. He said, you know what the fuck they meant. Oh my Which God. is totally his thing. Yeah, yeah. You said one thing. I'm answering it that exact way. Yeah. You didn't yeah. ask me, did I know? In, in any other court of law. Right. right. Understandable. There's no self-incrimination. <laughs> like, yeah, like you, you would stop. But in the court and, of suspect games, yeah. <laughs> they make up the rules. Well, I got 45 days of uh, extra duty. Does that mean washing walls? Well, we had a chow hall in the barracks, and so we had to work in the chow hall. Okay. Uh, and then I got I got called by that same CO playing stickball with a sponge. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and you were what, 18 at the time? Uh, yeah, 18, 19, 19. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You had like three whole brain cells, got it? Yeah. And then, and then we had to go apologize to the people. Mm. And I don't know how it was in the Army, but in the Marine Corps, you cannot wear white socks in your uniform. No, they're black. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends on which. So you wore white socks. You got in trouble for wearing white socks. Not me. I had my black socks on. But I I mean, I guess my my friend there from New Jersey wasn't thinking he had white socks on. So I guess he was like, no one's going to know. But he didn't think about you got to take your boots off when you walk into a Japanese house. Oh. So. And that captain was with us, and he, like, his face was (laughs) red. He was so pissed. And then we were out in the parking lot pushing. And I'm like, why am I pushing? I didn't do it. Because apparently you're supposed to inspect your friend before you well, can, arrive anywhere. I can tell you a million stories just like that. Yep. But no, so the uh, when I got my Article 15, um, we had we were like, I don't know, like a couple weeks out from change of command. And, uh, and this new, is in Korea? Yeah. New first, like I had, I had just... Gotten there, no, no, shortly after I had my surgery. So I'd been there for a couple of months and I was like recovering. And, you know, they're telling me, yeah, yeah, I have to do this. I have to pass a PT test. I have to do all this shit. And at that time in the army, I've told you this a couple of times, they would legitimately threaten you with some of the dumbest shit. Like if, if I wouldn't have graduated AIT or at least with my class that I joined, that I went with or recycled one time, I would have gone to become a field truck driver or a truck driver of some kind. And everyone knew that truck drivers were being blown up in Iraq and Afghanistan. Right. So you don't want to do that. You right. want to pass the school that you joined the military to be and then go on from there. So they're like, oh, if you don't do this, if you don't, if, if you're not, you know, uh, mission ready and everything like that and green and everything and pass your PT test and do this shit by X, Y, and Z day, you know, we're going to do this and then we're going to have you reclassed and send you back. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, so reclass, reclassification means change your MLS. So they send you back to school. And this whole time, I'm like the only medic in the unit. So that's the big reason that it was a problem because the command was failing their deployability ratings for, for medical. Right. And I'm not able to give people immunizations or update their medical records or tell them when to go to dental or anything like that because I'm the only motherfucker there. Right. And I'm on bed rest. They were gonna, they tried to give me an Article 15 for taking convalescent leave to recover from a fucking spinal surgery. Okay? So I get back and now they're just pissy with me about everything right. because there's a couple other guys, actual MPs, that were in ops and stuff like that, that just didn't like me. And they're like, oh, I saw him on his phone, like outside. So like smokers, smoke break every every hour, whatever, right? So I like went to take a phone call. Nothing else going on, nothing going on. Take a phone call, 
they come out, commander comes out, first time comes out, tell me to drop, start doing push-ups. They bring on my platoon sergeant, who's a fucking bitch. Fucking hated her from day one. A lot of anger energy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of anger energy. And so she's like, oh. just, just like continually just fucking treating me like shit. And one of the universal truths in the military is you don't fuck with duck. You don't fuck with supply and you don't fuck with the cooks. If you want sure. shit, if you want ammo, you want supplies, you want food, and you want to be taken care of, you don't fuck with those three people. And so they're just pissing me off. Like, I'm like, I'm already fucking over it. I'm already done with the fucking army at this point. Like, I'm only a couple months in. I just had to have fucking spinal surgery because of an injury because of the army. And now I'm being fucked with by these retards. And it's just one thing after, like, I'm just fucking pissed. So I get um, KP duty one day. Kitchen patrol is what we call our, like, support for um, the defect. Like, we just you just go there. Cracking eggs. Most of the time it was, like, checking in people. As soon as they come in, they type in their social. You make sure it clears. Make sure, like, their money is taken out of their bank account, essentially paying $3 for their slot meal. Or You have to pay for the slot meal? Yeah. Yeah. You get, like, a stipend, but then they just deduct it back out. And the more affordable move is to eat there because it's cheaper than going buying your own food and making it for the most part. I definitely thought it was included in no. your service. No. I did not realize you had to pay for it your used, It used to be. It used to be. Because we yeah. had to pay. The only time you had to pay when I was in is if you were married. Yeah, then you had to pay. Because you were paying for two people. We were giving you um, PAS. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I get like, and this is like, this is a normal thing. Every soldier... Everybody in the military has done this. You can trade duties with somebody or like bargain with them. Hey, man, I don't want to do this on Tuesday. Can you cover for me? And then I'll do something else for you or whatever, right? So I trade with this guy. And then I go down to Seoul to hang out with some of the Katusas, the Korean soldiers that were working for us. And I get a call while we're on the train. Hey, Lee Max, where you at? Oh, I'm on the train. Like, you're supposed to be on duty. And I'm like, oh, I traded with so-and-so. I'm, I've, I'm covering it in a, couple, in a couple days or whatever. Start fucking screaming at me. It's your responsibility to make sure a motherfucker shows up to cover for you, all this shit. So, like, because somebody else didn't show up, but my name was on the printed paper, mm -hmm. and even though we had crossed it out, changed the name, and both had initial, because that's the formality that right. you go through, so they knew that we traded. Everybody knew. But because you didn't stay to verify that he actually yep. showed up to yep. what he had agreed to yep. switching with. So I got it's on a, you. I got a fifteen and fifteen, Article fifteen, because somebody else didn't show up for a duty that we traded for. That's crazy. And that, like the fact that I'm still recovering from surgery, I can like barely fucking walk most of the time. All this other shit's going on. They've given they were giving me deadlines of when I have to be able to pass a PT test, which Includes doing sit-ups. It's kind of a problem for somebody with a fucking spine injury. Running, you know. The only thing that was reasonable was like, can you do push-ups? Probably. Because that's more core than it is your, your back and spine. But when you're doing sit-ups and you're rolling right on right. your fucking spinal cord. Right. So yeah, I I got back and we, our, our fucking commander is this little fucking going bald in his like 20s and 30s. Little five foot four leprechaun looking motherfucker. And so, so much hostility. He, yeah. Okay, actually, <laughs> here's here's the perfect person that I can um, relate him to. Pete Buttigieg. Uh, it's your favorite they buddy. The same, they have the same kind of demeanor with the way that they talk. It's yeah, all that the same. Me. Yeah, that me. And our first sergeant was like, I, I, I want to, I believe that he had started in like infantry and then uh, reclassed to become an MP because it's some MOSs have different. I don't know if you guys have point requirements, but in the army you have a point requirement for promotion for certain yeah. ranks. And I, th I believe MP was easier to earn points to get promoted. So it's, and it's a similar job except when you're stateside and you pretend cop while you also have regular cops doing the same job side by side with you. So yeah, anyways, but he was like, dude, just fucking sign the paper. And I was like, I'm gonna fucking 
go to Jag. I'm gonna fucking. Um, I'm gonna argue with you. Yeah, yeah. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. I'm, like, I'm going to so litigate this myself. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for a court martial for this shit. And did you? No, because once again, I listened to somebody else mm-hmm. who was like, it's not worth it. So, you know, just, just get it over with. Just, you know, cause if you go, if you lose a court martial and of course I'm still young enough at the time that I'm gullible enough to believe that they're really going to like fucking ruin my life and shit. So, if you were to lose it, they could actually escalate it and take you to uh, uh, 45 and 45 like he had, which also includes a reduction in rank, reduction in pay, all that kind of shit. So they basically guilted me into it. Gotcha. And so I took it, and I've like, that's another one of those things I've been pissed off every fucking sense. Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Yeah, so then, so then I... I Get back in shape and everything like that after my surgery. I pass my PT test. I go to EFMB. I fail the first time. I get fucked with about that when nobody else in the unit's even a fucking medic. And EFMB is the hardest fucking perfectionist course to pass in the Army. It's the expert field medical badge competition or course, one or the other. It has like a 7% attrition rate or graduation rate, whatever you want to say. And like there are doctors and nurses. It's not just boots on the ground medics. It's everybody can go, and it's the most prestigious award for medics. And you got it? The third time that I won. It's, it's hyper-detail-oriented. Like, you say a word out of order, or you connect something out of order. Like, it, it might not actually matter. Like, if I connected that chord before that chord, mm-hmm. it doesn't re- actually matter. But, but because the spec, the test, yeah, gotcha. because the book says... A, B, C, you have to do A, B, C. Gotcha. And that's the shit. And they don't tell you you failed until the last day, and it's three weeks long. And you went three times? Yep. Yeah. The only thing I remember about the docs was hook me up to the IV. Because you were hungover? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. It would look like Shocker. a hospital ward. Shocker. Shocker. Time, time. Shocker. Yeah. There was a lot of people that went to Okinawa and like saved a lot of money. And, and in hindsight, it was wrong. But we used to make fun of those people. They'd stay in, the, in their in their parish yep. and like, or do like historical tours through the mountains because apparently there was like still World War II stuff in the mountains. Are you saying just stashing away? Stashing away their money. I, on the other hand, drank it all away and. I had a good time. I don't. But you also remember a lot of it. Newly married with children. No, no, I was single. Oh, okay, no, I was. You got married after you got out. No, I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out. This I got married when I got to Camp Lejeune, so that was um, uh, '96. So barracks money. Ish. No, she went to ECU. Only went up there to party and. Okay. So again, another story as old as time, <laughs> as well as 25 percent interest rate on a Dodge Charger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, came rolling down here. So I came back from Okinawa, and um, you get 30 days leave when you come back from overseas. Okay. So I went um, went home to New Jersey, and uh, I was like, I'm going to need a car to go to Lejeune. So I went and bought an 88 Camaro. So it was 10 years old at that time, or 9 years old? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Was it a Z28? or No, no, straight Camaro. Couldn't afford the Z28. Oh, the V6? So. But it was probably like what, five grand maybe? Yeah, not close. Yeah, good. It was okay. like forty hundred dollars. Well, and yeah. uh but thirteen grand brand new versus a car now a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah now <laughs> I thought And don't you wish that you I still love had the it. I just was looking at one the other day, I'm like, what kind of shit is this? Yeah. But uh yeah, so I drove down here and that we you know, I was before GPS and my mother gets this map out and she highlights on the map which way I'm gonna go. Aww. Oh, yeah, that's it's, a good mother. She took me off the highway, all these back roads. You know, New Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. It's against the law. Yeah, it's fucking weird out there. I don't understand you people. Well, yeah. Oregon switched to that recently, didn't they? It, it was it was nice in the winter time. Pass the money through, fill it up. You have to get I don't out. know. It's weird. But I didn't know how to pump gas, so coming down here. Oh. That's why these people don't know how to drive, because yeah. they don't even know how to pump their own gas. I pull up to a gas pump, and I'm like, you know, because... <laughs> To be told you when you grow up up there, you think like you're like people in the south are slower. Obviously not true. No. <laughs> no. So I pull up to the gas pump and I'm like sitting there. I'm like, Where's the guy? Oh. And the rocking. 
<laughs> honking the horn. And, I'm like, and he probably was walking out with his rifle, like, who the fuck are you no, was, honking your horn at? The guy at the next pump, like, leaned around. He was like, what are you honking the horn for? I'm like, I'm waiting for a guy to come out and pump the gas. He's like, some guy coming out to pump the gas. He's like, pump your own gas. That's funny. I was like, oh, shit, I don't know how to do that. This dude doesn't show me how to pump the gas. And then I stood there, I was like, well, who's slow now? <laughs> so, oh yeah. my gosh. That's funny. I had a um, buddy of mine when I was down in Georgia that uh, just, it only relates to the gas portion. Um, he had he had bought his Mustang. He's actually a captain. He was at 03. And uh, we had all gone out, like there was like a Mustang club and stuff like that. And they would all meet up at Sonic and hang out and do that kind of thing. Go to the drag strip or then go to Auburn and party out there on football game weekends. I was there the year that they won the national championship with Cam Newton. So we were out there all the time. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, yeah, so we go and he needed to stop for gas. We go to Sam's Club. Because apparently Sam's Club is like how we view Costco today. As far as like cheaper gas or whatever goes. Well, the delivery driver had brought and filled up all the um, mid-grade and premium with diesel by accident. Mm. And he had had his car like, I don't know, like a couple hundred miles. He'd only like fill it up once or twice by this point. So he fills up, starts up the car. There was still like residual gas and stuff in the line. So, you know, you like, you drive off and you leave and you think it's normal. And then of course the gas station puts up the fight that we didn't do it because you were already gone by the time you had the problem. So he, he links up with us. He turns off the car. We're sitting there. We go to start. You know, everybody goes to leave. And he starts back up and just starts rolling, like, thin clouds of black smoke. It wasn't like somebody in their fucking diesel truck doing it. But it, and it was, like, sputtering. And then it, like, seized up. And we're sitting there like, dude, what's wrong with your car? And it was the one of the years that it was, like, a brand new model year. So it was, like, refresh. You know, new design. It was when they brought the 5.0 back and everything like that. So everybody's thinking, oh, great. The new Mustangs are shit. You know, dude buys it. only has it for a couple hundred miles and it's fucked. Well, tow truck comes, picks it up, takes it to the dealership. And they call the next day and they're like, hey, you put diesel in your tank. And we don't know how the fuck you did that. Because the diesel nozzle at the gas station is too large to fit in the inlet of a gas vehicle. It's supposed to be idiot proof. Yeah. So you can put gas in a diesel engine. But you can't put diesel in a gas engine unless you really fucking try hard. Gotcha. Okay. They have like a, most cars have an adapter thing because there's like a, a thing to prevent siphoning. So there's like an adapter that goes in. So if you use that adapter in a funnel, you can put diesel in it. But you're literally going out of your way right, to fuck right, up right. your own car at that right. point. So they tried to argue that it wasn't a problem. And not very many people buy mid grade. I don't know anybody that buys mid grade. You either buy regular or you buy premium. That's pretty much it. Apparently, they hadn't had very many people that bought it. Nobody really correlated the two or reported it. So it took them like a month before it finally hit the news. And they were like, anybody that bought gas at Sam's Club, you know, you need to contact them. This, yeah. He got an entirely new engine uh, fuel system, gas tank, and everything like that. So basically a brand new rebuild of a brand new car. Wow. Are you, are you Sam's Club or Costco? Costco. Costco. Through yes, and through. Sam's Club. The one I can't do that Costco with the grazers, the people in there grazing all the oh, time. I avoid they that. leave their we, we shopping We walked through Sam's Club because I had always had a Costco membership and I'd let it lapse. And I was like, okay, we'll give it a fair shot. We'll walk through Costco, but we'll walk through Sam's too. And both of us were like, yeah, the Sam's Club here is disgusting. Like, com- disgusting. So, disgusting. The, one, like the one in Mishawaka, South Bend area used to be. Um, Remember when we went Christmas shopping? Yeah. The One Plaza, um, I can't remember. It was one of the stores that you liked. Those like cheap, like not cheap, but like the shit that was out, like the new model came cheap out. Cheap shit. You know, like new clothes came out. So they like, it's still new. They just send it here at like clearance rates. Right. Talking about like TJ Maxx? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, man. So in that, in that plaza, the one next to it was like the Sam's Club when I was a kid. Okay. And then... I think Burlington moved into it and they built a brand new Sam's Club at Walmart side by side. And they're like super fancy, like as far as Walmart and Sam's Club fucking go. Okay. And I didn't even have a Costco until like a year before I moved here. 
So I, I went there like one time with a friend. I never went in. I never went until I moved out here. And then everybody went there. And I went to the Sam's Club a couple times with Josh because that's where he got the shit for his food truck and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I went in there and every time I was like, dude, this place, is, yeah, this place is fucking yeah. gross. So how do you tolerate it? Sam's Club? Yeah. I like it. I like that place. First of all, it starts in the parking lot. Let's start in the parking lot. The parking lot at Costco is a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. And if there is no risk of you getting mugged in the parking lot, is it even worth going to the store? What the fuck? So, your chances are better at Sam's Club. Those are more my kind of people. I park almost in the exact same spot at Costco every time I go. I always park right next to the gas station. Always. I don't okay. random places every time. I don't. Yeah. I I don't like going with you when you're driving because it irritates me that you drive onto the wrong side of the parking lot. There's only one correct place to park in Costco. It's easy in, easy out. You park right next to the gas station. There's too many people in that place. Yep. And there's a lot, let's be honest, there's a lot of elderly people in there. Yes. They're out for their daily adventure. Right. They're out for lunch. Okay. On the free samples. Okay. And then they leave the shopping cart full of shit in the middle of the aisle. Right. And they have to have full conversations about this one box of whatever. But you could just. Yeah. I know. Same Irish people. people. I I don't dislike old people. I just don't like they. They take up too much Yeah, space. they're always yeah, no, like... Yeah, no, Harris Teeter's the exact same way, but that's my go-to grocery store. They're always like so I'm just five carts it. wide, yeah. but with their family, everybody walking shoulder right. to shoulder right. instead of in a line, and then you can't get around them, they're like... And then yeah. one person's like, ooh, yeah, and the whole, like, yeah. the whole group of idiots stops. No, and then you're don't stand, say idiots. You're standing there behind them until somebody's like... Move over real quick. And then as soon as you move over, there's five more people behind you. No, but then you're all of their saviors because they're about four foot 11 and they can't reach anything on the top shelf. And they're like, can you help me? Oh, you're so sweet. I feel like what he would do is push it back further. Oh, fuck that. No. Like, yeah, no problem. (laughs) That actually, that perfectly brings up the uh, story from uh, getting the flowers at Harris Teeter a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you want to tell that story? Yeah. So I go into the one... Right here. The new one? The big yeah. one? Yeah. I walk in and uh, get, was it just the flower? I can't remember if I got anything else or not. But anyway, so I bought two dozen, so two bouquets of roses to bring home for her. And I'm at the checkout, and the, the chick at the checkout, the short little black woman, she's like, something along the lines of like, you better not, better not be for your mistress. Like the, I told her exactly what she said. It was funnier at the you time. You said that she said, "Who's the other dozen yeah, yeah, for?" Yeah. She looked right at me and was like, "Oh, you're buying two. It clearly can't just be for one person." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "No, nope, they're both for my wife." She's like, "Mm-hmm." But no, I love that. That is a girl's girl right there. She was looking out for the person who's attached to the ring on your finger. So you're saying that somebody's going to create like a, a group on social media or like an app where they're like, whose husband is this? He bought two bouquets. Now Probably. Just he did it to that guy on yeah. the airplane. The guy on the airplane. What? Remember, that, didn't they, remember that guy on the airplane that um, was talking to the girl next to him? You didn't see this? No. It was like a couple of months ago. This girl on an airplane. Uh, this dude was sitting behind this woman. And I guess he was talking to whoever was sitting next to him. You guys see Bella? <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, the lady in front of him, like, recorded it and put it online, and then this big thing started up. They found the dude. He was, like, on some kind of business in Houston or something. Okay. Like, and it put him, they, like, put him on blast. But was he actually cheating? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I know. Was, he was talking. He was, I guess he was making arrangements with the girl next to him on the plane. To hook up with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's oh, what the story was. Yeah. And they, she recorded it and put it online. Okay, well, figure it out who it was. Then I can appreciate that she was looking out for again the person attached to the ring on the finger. Yeah, I can't remember the one. It was just a few months ago. That's crazy. Yeah. Social media at work. Yeah. Popped him quick. He's asking you if you want another drink. Uh, oh no, 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 I'm good. Okay. I was asking the dog if they want another. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's why they're like, you know, another one. They never say no. Sorry about that. The dogs are being dogs today. Dogs are being dogs. Anytime. It's because it's been pouring rain for like three days straight. They have nothing else to do other than like be over. Well, Bella, the pit bull that was down here. So the the reason I had to get them out of here, like we used to let them kind of come through here, but they'll go through those cords and pull all this shit down. It's pulled the lights down one time we were recording. And that was well. Just, I I actually went to buy um, dog gates and stuff for in here, and when I got there, I didn't have the very specific one that she liked, so I left the store with nothing. You know where they probably at? Sam's Club. No, they were at the Lowe's. Two miles down. He didn't want to go two more miles down. I went to the Lowe's of Monkey Junction. Instead of going to Lowe's out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And since I'm already this way, I don't want to go all the way back this way just to come back this way. That is, that is a pain on, uh, on South College. Yeah. You know what I do miss? I miss the Lowe's, the new Lowe's out in Leland. Oh, there's never anybody in it. Yeah. Those are the nicest group of people in there that you've ever seen. Every really? t- the, oh, yeah. the handful of times I walked in there before we sold the house, completely empty, clean. Oh, yeah. Because it was brand no, new. No, no, no. Of course. Even, even after it's months. It's going to be clean. No, it's still clean now. There's, I believe it. It's probably going to be, I, I predict by three years is when you're going to start the, to see dirt. The biggest problem at any hardware store is people go in there and a lot of parts are like individually packaged. Mm-hmm. And so they're flowing out and then there's like, the slightly different size right next to it, or like a bin down here, or whatever, and it just gets all you know mixed up. Mm-hmm. So even if you're using the website and you're like, oh, it should be an aisle, whatever, bin, whatever, and then you go there and you're like, there's none. It says there's forty of them. But that one's a mini low, so they have um, no. It's wood. actually this is yeah. It's a it's mm-hmm. a it just oh, okay. instead of being wide, it's like square. Whatever, it's fucking small. No, it's the same size as these. It's just a square instead of being a rectangle. Okay. It's it's deceiving until you walk in. And you're like, oh, I've never been inside. It, obviously, you know how the the two here have just like you have like two main rows of stuff. Mm-hmm. You have that first section, then you have the back section. Mm-hmm. That one has three. Okay, it's yeah. nice. Good talk. Yeah. And it's nice people. Helpful. And that, helpful. That, and, that obviously helps. And it smells like a new place. It doesn't smell like homeless people live there. Yeah. It smells like wood and yeah. screws and yeah. shit. Every time I go in, not liquor and broken dreams. <laughs> Every time I go into either of these WalMarts, oh, dude, I'm like, I refuse. I will not go to Walmart. Period. I don't like to go to Walmart at all, but if I have to, I'm going to go to Leland. Yeah. Even Porter's Neck is, is a little sketch. These all like, Walmart. Both of these are so terrible. Actually, I walked in. Um, what, a couple days ago, um, to get a bunch of random stuff that the kids said that she wanted a notebook because they had done back to school shopping and she had mentioned that she wanted or needed a new notebook or whatever. And so I was like getting pens and stuff like that. And Cash had said that he wanted a, or she wanted a way to blanket. And they, all the kids, all of them, and I know she's told me a million times how she like is like claustrophobic, but she does sleep with a lot of blankets. I'm like, well. Maybe she like I've never wanted a weighted blanket in my life. I know, but <laughs> all of them, all the kids, they were all like, "Oh yeah, she did say it. She did say it." So I'm like, "Okay, will you go lay down, please. Your tail's hitting the light. Go, go lay down." Um, so I'm like, "Fine, whatever." So we go and we find them, and they like have no selection. Like there's, it, it's literally like the worst thing ever. Yeah. And so we grab it. And we go to like walk out, I'm holding it, it's 12 pounds, I'm holding it kind of like a football. And some random dude wearing a book bag, he didn't look dirty, but maybe he was on a motorcycle or something, I don't, but he didn't have a helmet, maybe he left the helmet on the bike, I don't know. And I'm like walking down like one of the main aisles. And he's like, hey sir, did you buy that, or did you get that uh, weighted blanket here? And I'm like, fuck question. <laughs> no, I brought it with me. Yeah, that's literally what I'm taking in my head. It still has the whole, you know, wrap around sleeve label on it. You should have pulled it out and like, no, what yeah. the and I pulled it over here. So, so the the other funny it's an invisibility blanket. Yeah, yeah. It's not a weighted blanket. The other the other funny thing about it is nowhere visible the way that I was holding it that it says it was a weighted blanket, which has still been weird to me. 
He was probably watching you through the towels or something. Man, you know, look at that oh, whole hunk of man right there. Oh my god! <laughs> but we happened to be we happened to be at like the T. We're like it was at the other end of that aisle where the blankets were, and I was like, "Yeah, right over there." But in my head, I'm thinking, "I don't like buy shit at other stores and bring them into Walmart with me for fun." I'm like, oh, why not? If that's something that normal people do, that's clearly other people <laughs> are doing it. He's, he's onto something. Did you use the weighted blanket? Hell no. Felicia wanted one until she got the, so she used it, and then. I don't like this thing. It's got me pinned down. Yeah. <laughs> two of the kids, as soon as she was like, I don't want it, two of them were like, I want it, I want it, I want it. And they, like, they ended up upstairs. So I don't know if either of them. It's on it. Cash's bed, but he hasn't used it yet. I thought he said he did. Mm-mm. It's horrible. Yeah. It's like fucking laying on top so of it. So yeah. I think that maybe that's their new manipulation tactic. Mom wants it. Yeah. Knowing that I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to do something uh, nice and bring something home for her. And me look at you like, yeah. what? It, it's only a couple of books, right? Like, it's not it's not like buying a new diamond ring. That's good thinking. Mom wants my yeah. little pony. I mean, yeah. I've always yeah. wanted it but so I, much. We, we, did, we did find out a couple weeks ago, the day Deadpool came out, we found out a way to uh, trick them into going to and trying a new restaurant. And I, I even said it out loud, and I think it'll still work. What? So we went. We got dessert first. We didn't even order any food. We went to that French restaurant that's by the movie theater. It's because there was no food that they would have eaten. No I mean, snails? No, they weren't going to eat snails. Talking about something else. So yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's duck right there. Yeah, I mean, okay, whatever. But I mean. That's there. There's a. I saw something recently where they were talking about how to like improve receptiveness to like things that you don't like and trying new things. It's to make the last thing that you do the thing that makes you happy. Like saving the last, the, your favorite bite of food is your last bite of food. It leaves you with a more fond memory of that place, even if the rest of the food sucked. As long as the last thing that you ate was good, you have a, a better skewed well i already had a negative skew but not because of the food and not because of the restaurant in general but because we looked like slob kebabs i've I've been working from home all day i was basically we walked out of deadpool and it was like right when they were getting ready to have their fancy restaurant and and, and it's it's a fancier upscale restaurant like everybody was in their fine dinner wear and yes literally the girl closest to the door hugest eye roll when I pushed the door open and saw how I was dressed, not to the nine, and the children were basically in PJs. They weren't really in PJs, but you know, we we were trying to stay warm in the freezing cold uh, movie theater and then walked over there and like, oh my God, duh. That thing? (laughs) She farted off. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's definitely a dog. Great. (laughs) Everybody hold your breath. Yep. Everybody hold your breath. So, yeah, I think I think that technique will work. Just go there. Go go to where you want to eat, where everybody agrees. I'm I'm a thousand percent taking the girls back for crepes, which are only between like nine and three on like Thursday, Friday, and maybe Wednesday or something like that. Like super weird hours and days, but just for crepes, and we'll be dressed. And we're going to do it before school starts. Yeah, well, like, just you, like, like oh, you, you guys continue talking about this. I'll be right back. Oh, God. What happened? What, 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 what She's farting. And they're cracking her right. uh, My parents used to tell me, let's, you know, the technique they used was get in the car, we're going. Yeah. I haven't done it in an aggressive way, but we're going on an adventure. I don't tell them where. I don't tell them when. I don't tell them for how long. We're going on an adventure. Period. The end. Okay, let's go. Uh, my father never said nothing about an adventure. Uh, so get in the car, we're going. But that sounds almost like a punishment. So it's, all, it's, all, it's all in the delivery as well. It is. It is. But I also um, sat at the table because I didn't want to eat 
whatever it was. And they would all eat and I'd still be sitting there. They'd turn the lights out. That's <laughs> sitting there. My kids do yeah. not know how good they have it that yeah. I, I went through that as well when I was a child of you either eat what's in front of you or you go to bed hungry. Whereas I'm like, you need to at least try. At least try it. I'm not going to go out of my yeah. way to like cook a separate meal or anything like that. But you need to at least put forth solid effort into what was prepared. Try and then as an ulterior option, some leftovers from what was cooked like the night before or something. Yeah. Well, After you put forth solid effort. It was no, it, it was eat it, all of it. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's, that's how I was raised as well. It, either clean your plate or you go to bed. And my, uh, my grandmother on my mother's side was German. Mm -hmm. And so she would make this like sour broughton. Mm. Like it was, I don't know what kind of meat it was. But you would like pickle it or something right. and leave it on a porch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, it was horrible. And I'd eat it. Ugh. Yeah. Pickled yeah. meat? <laughs> it was disgusting. Yeah, it's called sour broth. It was terrible. Pickled meat. I don't know that I've ever heard of pickled meat. Now my mind is just spinning yeah. in disgust. And not even ref it was on the porch. Like it was yeah. sat yes. out on the back porch. Disgusting. For however long, it felt like 100 years, but it probably wasn't that long. It probably was. It was gross. Oh, it was gross. But she made like these. Potato pancake things too. Mm -hmm. They were pretty good. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. Latkes? I guess. I don't know. I believe. I don't, I don't know. know. They were good though. Those were good, but the meat was not not good. It's not good. But I will say I feel like I eat a lot of stuff now because I got forced to. Right. So I'll, I'll eat more stuff now. Or you were introduced to. Again, it's all in the delivery. Sure. Not forced to. You were introduced. Oh, I was forced. <laughs> that was that was forced. <laughs> that was either or else. Yeah. Hello. I feel better. Welcome Everybody to feel the good now. Did you mean to do that? Uh, whisper. Uh, uh. Neither of them did anything. So, get out. Well, somebody had one rolling off a fresh one. Yeah. They just went outside and did absolutely nothing. Sniffed That's, around? No, they didn't even sniff. They just stood there, stared down the driveway. Like they were waiting to get picked up. <laughs> Their so, other mommy is coming. Yeah. And then I heard this one. She must have gotten on the bed and is like barking out the window because she could hear us out here. And that window faces over on that Aww. side. Save. Me. Yeah, she's barking. Me. At the window instead of at the door. Say for me. But that dog, when she starts barking, I don't even know why she sounds like a hound. But when she starts barking, like it just nonstop, just completely involuntary, just does not stop barking. And then whispers is like a reflex. So she'll do it. And then when you tell her stuff, she's like, Like Tourette's. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, my dog has Tourette's. There we go. That's perfect. Barking Tourette's. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Bella, the pit that was between your legs and my uh, Her happy place. She, she has a, like, squeal. Rude. She, that's what she, she, Rude. Like, she doesn't have a bark. She has a squeal. Rude. It's like this high-pitched, oh. Oh. First your eardrums. Yeah. Rude. You know I'm right. Rude. You know I'm right. Rude. We have three that one starts barking and then the other two just join in. And they don't know what they're barking at. They're just barking because this one's barking. Well, so we have that too. The experience that you just had when you came in the door earlier is the least barking that they've done ever. They... When you came in the door, they barked less than when I walked to get the mail from the mailbox. Mm -mm. Yes. No. Yes. Not accurate. Could have, could have been a plastic bag coming up behind you you didn't see. They were warning you about it. You don't know. As soon as you unlock that door, doesn't matter if you're unlocking it like, or even locking it, just for the sake of unlocking or locking it, they're all up and start barking. 
Like it's immediate. They didn't, we never really had anybody going through the front door at the old house. It was always through the garage. So the problem there was fatal funnel coming through the yeah. washroom. <laughs> trying to get past them, trying to carry groceries, trying to do anything with more than one person. So, so anyways, True. Yeah. Over. Yep. since you're the oldest one here, can you teach us anything for us going into our 40s? I'll be 35 at the end of this week. He's obviously past. Did you say you're going to be 45? I said I'll be 35 at the end of you this week. You're 45 too, right? No. No, I'm 35. And I said that you are past 35. So we are both approaching the big 4 0 in the next few years. What would you tell your younger son? Am I though? Do you think I'll make it that long? I hope so. As much as you think that I want you gone or whatever you were implying earlier, I hope that you make it to 40. Okay. Thank you. So. After 40, though? I, I, I don't you know. just we'll have see. to make it we'll, to we'll see. We'll see about that. What can you teach him or what would you pass wisdom on to both of us? I, I would say... One, you better check and see if there's an insurance policy that pays out if you hit 40. Uh, two, <laughs> um, I would say the, the the second half of my 40s have been better more so because I've paid more attention to like my own health and what I eat and my, and my fitness and things like that. And so I feel much better now than I did before. Like my mid-40s, I had... Uh, I had a two-level spinal fusion done, like two different back surgeries a year apart. So, oh, wow. yeah. So, um, but now that I pay more attention to those things, like I feel a hundred times better. So, okay. I was, I wish I would have stayed. So, take care of yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's lesson number one. I'm like a walking health condition. That's non-contagious, fortunately. <laughs> I've never had any STDs ever, have you? No. no. Yeah. Have you? Oh, no, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. So no matter what, you always have that goal for you. God. But you have everything else wrong with you. So, but your dick works. Well, when they bring that up at the VA, when they're like, we got this. this, this <laughs> like, but I never had the clap. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you, did you guys call it, uh, when you get tested, getting rotted off the ring? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What? Or getting the, what, the people that had... The chlamydia had to get their bore punch to call you yeah. the bore punch. Yeah. <laughs> Take a brush, I guess, and ram it up there to clean it out. So, get your bore punch. What? <laughs> so, oh, and what? you had to do this to people? No, 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 no. Fortunately, no. no. How'd you get out of that? Because it was something you actually had to go get and have diagnosed, and we didn't have any MDs or anybody working with us. Oh, so, they had to go off base. No, we first. there's clinics in hospitals. Oh, so I don't understand. I didn't work in a clinic or hospital. Oh, okay. All right. Anyways. So. So you lucked out. You were no, playing with no, people's penises. No, Got it. I wasn't until I worked in the hospital. As a civilian. Catheter. No catheter in. Yep. Gotcha. Um, so when, when you go to a rifle range, you have to clear the, the weapon. Okay. So you have to, you actually have to, you have to physically do it and then you have to demonstrate it to the NCO. Okay. They have to visually verify that there's nothing in the chamber, there's no magazine, there's nothing in the magwell. As soon as you put the, uh, okay. push the ball forward, then, yeah. So then they take a rod, a metal rod, and they shove it down the barrel, and it hits the the um oh my god, well, I can't think the uh, bolt the, the bolt charity group, whatever you want to call it, hits it and it releases it as okay. if it was chambering around. So if there was a bullet in there, it would have gone off. Okay. And they call it getting rotted off the range. And they say the same thing about going to the clinic and being checked for STDs. You're being rotted off the proverbial sex range. We call it getting your bore punched because when you cleaned your rifle, you had that little brush on the end yeah. of the rod and you ran it down. I mean, apparently that's when they... I'll show you my clinic and I'll show you where it's like um it's like a wire wire brush thing like yeah. you would clean out any like 
Like a, I sincerely hope they don't use a wire brush and they use a Q-tip. I don't know. I, <laughs> I sincerely hope it's a Q-tip. It depends on how mad you made the uh, medic or the Cormus, I guess. Now I'm just thinking about all of the dicks getting punched with a wire brush. <laughs> well, and I've, I've told you, I've told you so many stories about stupid shit like that, like that dumb medics try to get away with, like the in processing medic. When I got to Korea, that I found out about later on, he didn't do it to me, but when he was doing the uh, smallpox jabs, he was doing it on some people who was like creating designs. So, like smiley faces? Yeah, smiley yes. faces, crosses, X's. It's supposed to just be a, a really tight, confined little circle. Yeah. And he was making designs on people, and he got an Article 15. I think he... I don't remember. I... I I remember hearing that it was more serious than it was, but I think maybe I'm just misremembering now and that he like really did get in a lot of trouble. I don't remember. But yeah, he you can't fuck around with stuff like that. Like I'm people are like, oh you're so uptight and you're this and that. I'm like because I'm not gonna let you idiots fucking convince me to do something stupid that's gonna get me in real trouble. I'm not going to jail because you wanna make a joke. When you got all your vaccines, they used a gun or the needle. Um, at Knox, when I was in basic, they used the gun. Oh, the gun was fantastic. Yeah. It was like <laughs> air. If you moved, it would cut you. It was like a hit sound, it would pressure, air pressure. Yeah. Right? It's like that, the, the thing that they use on the show that we watch periodically. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's, that's like the dramatized version of it. Yeah. Everything else, everything after that, I either did to myself or... Like when I was in Korea, I basically did everything myself. And then when I went down to Benning, uh, when I actually had medical NCOs above me, they did everything. I don't think I had, I think when I got back that I had to do very much though. Oh, before I went to Okinawa, it was like a thousand. Yeah. You had to do yellow fever, fever thousand, whatever the Japanese brain slowing disease is, whatever yeah. that is. Hemorrhagic fever. In case you're wondering. Okay. Hemorrhagic okay. fever, uh, typhoid. Diphtheria, the the normal like Tdap, uh, diphtheria, tetanus, all that other shit. Um, anthrax was probably before your time. When I joined, the anthrax schedule was like fucking every two weeks. For I think you had you had three shots within two weeks, and then one every month for like three months, and then every six months, and then after that you got an annual booster. Started off being like a seven or nine shot schedule. Do you guys think they ever slipped in anything just to experiment on you guys? There's all kinds of I'm dumb sure. drugs, like the malaria drugs that everybody used, like in his generation and shit. It fucking like causes all kinds of brain problems and shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, he didn't ever have to go to Africa or anything, so yeah. he probably didn't take it. You don't think they just gave it to you just just in case? I don't know. Isn't that all the I know that was I'm, just in case? I walked down a line of uh, air guns and they hit you in both shoulders right, like so repeatedly. Probably, so I'm so sure he had it. Well, the the malaria drugs, unless I. Unless I don't know of an of a high am or uh, whatever injection, um, they were oral, so like you would have known that like you would have gotten a bottle of prescription and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I, I don't even remember what it was called now, but yeah, they're like yeah, they're probably like here's your Gatorade, choke. It literally in some people we'll it. in some right in some people it caused um, symptoms that were in line with somebody who had a TBI and had PTSD. So from taking a neural drug, they ended up developing PTSD. Even if they I hadn't even if they had not experienced any traumatic it. event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You never know what they're giving you. Yeah. Exactly. They got people that burn pit exposure. They, they and got, all of you guys have tinnitus, right? Basically. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dude, that's one thing that I wish uh, we would have had, like our generation, were like the new uh, earbuds and stuff that we have now. Um, I wore mine to the range uh, when I went with DJM and like their fun day or whatever. I wore my Pixel Buds Pro and dude, like put just putting it in like transparency mode and then like going to actual like full noise cancellation to shoot, so much better than having the big over the years or like the stupid 3M ones that that's your favorite commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We had something similar as sometimes you do cigarette butts. Yeah. <laughs> that was a recommend, like, at yeah. some, you forgot your ear pro? Yeah. Better figure it out. Cigarette butts. Damn. Yeah. What about, um, I assume you stayed in the barracks or no? Mm-hmm. Well, I stayed in the barracks in, uh, in, in Okinawa and then when we came back, uh, me and four guys got a trailer outside of, uh, outside of Lejeune. Oh, see, so that was my question was if you were on the barracks in Lejeune, I know that there's like a lot of mold um, at Fort Liberty or whatever you want to call it now. And then Lejeune, I was wondering if it oh, was. Oh, yes. I was at um, French Creek, which used to be known as like the ghetto of Camp Lejeune. And uh, yeah, yeah, they're tearing them down now. But they had every mold in the, in the barracks. Mm. The, I don't even know. The, the barracks that I stayed in um, in Korea were like maybe 10, 20 years old, whatever. Like they weren't like super old yet. But when the only people maintaining your building are a bunch of alcoholic 20 year olds, Hmm. mopping, sweeping, cleaning. It's a discipline problem, Andrew. Sure, but it's also a command problem because they should be in there putting eyes on it. I was being facetious. No, you're right. I'm just yeah, everybody agrees it is a it's, it's a discipline problem. We would buff the shit out of the floors. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'd wax them and then buff them on, on field day. And um, <laughs> this my man was next door. This big dude was riding the buffer, riding the buffer down the hallway. Bah, 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 bah. And. Uh, this guy's coming up. We had an inspection the next day. This guy's coming up the, up the stairs, and he's got his boots on. And everybody knows, like, on field day, boots come off when you come inside. He's coming up the stairs, and I'm staring at my door watching because we cheated. We used um, Mop and Glow in the little square at the front. Mop and Glow it. So we're watching um, this dude. And you can see him. He's with the buffer, and he's looking. And he's coming up. He went this way. Now he's coming up this way. He's right there by the stairs. He's got the buffer. He's looking at him. And all of a sudden, he's like... The man's foot started to come up, and he was like, <laughs> down the stairs, he went, knocked him out. <laughs> can't leave the footprints. Can't leave footprints. Can't leave footprints. Can't leave footprints. footprints. Can't have footprints okay. Yeah. He drilled him. Not even a one. Not even like, bro, don't. Just, bam, him. <laughs> the biggest problem when I was at Benning, so it was a cadre barracks, which anywhere else would have just been like, Low level NCO, non married barracks. They're not off post yet or off base yet or whatever. And uh, like it's just a small building, just a little two story building. I don't even know how many rooms we had or whatever. But fucking bugs, dude. The, like you think they're bad here in this house, in the old house? Like the fucking bugs in Georgia. Oh my God. I bug bombed my own barracks room. Got a hotel room multiple times to like just be like went to the store and bought whatever fucking Walmart had and just set off a bunch of them. They're, they're like supposed to cover a certain square footage or whatever. And I would double, triple that up, set them all off, leave the room, come back and <laughs> clean all this shit up. I started at one point after I'd been there for like a month or two because I would go and grab something out of the cabinet and it would just have roach crawling on it. Like not even open yet. A fresh box of cereal or whatever. Hadn't even opened the bag inside of it yet. And I'd pull it out, open the box, and a bunch of roaches would come crawling out. So I just put everything in the refrigerator. I had nothing in the cabinets except plates, bowls. That were being crawled on yeah. by your roaches. Yeah. Your little buddies. Yeah. So fortunately, mm-hmm. I was basically never there. <laughs> so it was just one on there. I have something to eat. Most of the time I either stayed at my buddy's house off post or we were working 36 on 36 off shifts. So I'd be asleep, wake up, and I'd like go to Auburn, eat and do whatever, drink there. We'd like be out of of whatever restaurant or whatever bar we were. So it's almost never there. But the fact remains fucking disgusting. And when nobody else is doing it, nobody else is bug bombing that they're, they're not coming around maintaining the barracks and spraying or whatever else. Right. They're just going to reinfest after right. however long. I remember the first time I walked in there, it had this huge, like those small little square tile 
whatever, like in the shower. So you walk in there and there's like not even a curtain rod or anything. I had to like go buy one. I came back and when I went to put it up, I extended the little bar across the thing and it broke a tile. So I had to report it so that I wouldn't get like, hey, I just fucking got here and I'm putting on my shit and it broke a little tile on the wall. So they send out um, the people from housing. The guy comes in, he's this little like, I don't know, like Ethiopian dude, he's like five foot two. He's talking like super fast to me and everything. You know, he's like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to pull it on and I got to do this. He comes back in there, I don't know, like 30 minutes later with all the supplies and he breaks out a bunch of the other tiles around it and fucking swarms of them come out of the wall. Lovely. And the only thing I'm thinking is like, can I get a different room? <laughs> can I? No. No. Yeah, Every no. single room yeah. was like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. So now it's a mold problem. I'm sure there's roach problems in a lot of places. Yeah, I'm sure. That uh, haunts and, have you ever heard of Hots and Cots? Mm-hmm. There, yeah. So it's an app for anybody that's watching this or listening to this that doesn't know. It's a former uh, or an Air Force veteran that that created it. Um, I'm not allowed to say his name and where he works, but I do know because I know who he is. What? You're being super weird about it. You could have just said hots and cots no, and moved on. What I'm getting is like a super smart guy. But as Rick knows, when you, as you come down, I actually want to know about the Space Force now. As you come down the, t- the tiers of the branches, in our day you started an Air Force, they have everything like you can yeah. get steak and lobster dinner every night at the DFAC. And like, yeah, I'm sure Space Force is even more bougie. Well, most, you need a massage? Okay. Most of the Space Force are still people that are in the Air, Air Force, Force yeah. filling those jobs because they haven't recruited and filled those jobs gotcha. yet. My brother-in-law's niece, I think, is in the Space Force. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can ask. Yeah. Let They're, us know. They, somebody posted that they had like $120,000 or $160,000 for... Uh, enlistment bonuses for select MOSs. And I was like, thinking about it, I'm like, I mean, sure, that could be like good money, but now we're talking Space Force and you're talking like rockets and probably cyber jobs and stuff like that, like like actual IT jobs. And I was thinking about it and the fucking salaries and stuff. So they're getting paid like starting 36, 35 to like 40 ish thousand dollars for like E2, E3. Fresh out of training, and $160, $160,000 bonus sounds big, but it's split up over the duration of your reenlistment contract. And you're talking about guys who, if they just got out, could make that in a year or less. So it's like, hey, take a pay cut, stay in the service, don't get out. The, like those same jobs that they're telling them, hey, stay in for. But isn't that on par for every single branch? Um, not really. I mean, maybe. I mean, when I joined for medic, um, I had a thirty-seven thousand dollars bonus. So it was a eighteen, nineteen-year-old. Don't you wish you still had that bonus? I like he said, I yeah. squandered it. All. Right. It's like I believe it. So they give you, and it might be different now. At that time, they would give you your hookers. Yeah, yeah totally. At that group, at that oh my time. god, I'm having a deja vu moment. Why? Like you literally in I I like felt that you have told me you're exactly probably, that. You're probably talking about something like this at the winery. Yeah. Mm, I got ten. Grand. I don't think so. I don't think you've ever talked about what you guys did with your money and I got ten grand less tax, so I got seventy five hundred dollars direct deposited like a month after I got to Korea. That was the first part of my thirty seven, and the rest of it was split up over the remaining three years on that on that very specific day like september 29th or whatever every year is when i got my disbursement from mm-hmm. it and i can't like 10 grand out of 30 so i mean it was almost evenly distributed but if you have a bonus that big what do you think an 18 year old or 19 year old these days is going to do with 40 or 50 grand when their actual salary is like 35 and they're living in the barracks getting shit on, it's probably to go buy the dumbest fucking car they can afford. Not that they don't deserve that kind of money, but the military should really consider increasing troop salaries and living and food and all that shit. 
Because you have the same, you can probably invest less. They could, they would probably save money by just paying you a better salary and not giving you as big of a bonus. So say starting at like 50 grand instead of. Yeah. You come in, complete your training, shit like that, and you start off at like 50 grand. But would you have signed up if the starting was 50 grand and you weren't getting any kind of bonus? Because I'm pretty sure that bonus is like a dangle in front of an 18 year old's eyeballs. Well, you know why I joined. So yeah, I know why you joined, but I'm talking about 80% of other people. I didn't make 50 grand. Or did I get a bonus? So. Yes, you didn't yes. get a bonus at all? No. no bonuses, bonuses are like at times when recruiting is doing really bad mm -hmm. or like we're ramping up operations. Right. And you were at the point where they just needed bodies. Yeah. Gotcha. So like EOD was a hundred grand for six years. And my parents talked me out of it. They're like, do something you'll do when you get out and look how I'm not a medic anymore. Mm. <laughs> look how you don't do any of that stuff anymore. Yeah. I still put ammo away. So it's the same thing. I just yeah. put it away in my house now. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I play medic when the kids have a fever. Time. Take some motion, change your socks, drink a yep. little water. Yep. Yep. All good. Yep. Spot on. They know they know the routine at this point. <laughs> and then feed him Skittles. Your ankle could be hanging off, maybe. Right. Change your socks. Mm -hmm. Take a little motion, drink some water, you're good. Yep. Dude, my, my phone actually has a uh a uh, laser thermometer. So I can oh, check yeah. I can check the temperature across your forehead with my phone. And it's more accurate than my actual temp probe, the laser uh infrared temp probe that I have for the grill. I'm going to let it go when it was her hand and she'd be like this. Now you're good. Go to school. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be the back, but same no, thing with she the this way. She like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's no, not wrong. Says, Shut up. I'm going to school. Well, it's, it's like, it's very obvious. Like for you, you're basically a lizard sometimes. So everything's hot to you. <laughs> I'm a lizard. I'm a lizard person. Because you're always freezing cold when it's like, it's 70 degrees in here right now. And... She's going to, as soon as we stand up and we're done with this, she's like, I've been freezing the whole time. Are you cold? I'm okay right now because I'm being baked underneath the lights. There's sure. okay. a lot of lights happening. But these lights aren't even putting off a lot of heat. Well, I can feel it. So I'm okay she's for right just, now. She's just And I've got, oh, my, yeah. I've got my toes in my cozy slippers. So, so. the office is literally your terrarium. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm a creepy lizard person. Thank you, Andrew. I'm you make kidding. me feel so special. I love you too. You're very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. You're I know we've, we've we've taken an hour and a half Are of you your cold? time. No, See, it's already. Right. Oh, no, yeah. it's already been an hour and a half. I don't want to. I don't want to take you away from your wife for too long. She's not even on board. She, he said that she no, was going to be yeah, right. I'm thinking of Felicia. Come on now, Andrew. She's thinking of the woman attached to this ring. Yes, exactly. Thank you, she's Felicia, getting, she's for getting off work right now, so he should get going so he can go be with his lovely wife. Thank you for loaning us your husband. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for having me. When you guys um when she's not working because of a natural disaster, you guys will have to both come on. So if it if it wasn't only you, we wouldn't be in here. We wouldn't have to squish another person here. We bring the big table out and go in there. Ooh. Yeah, set it up all nice and fancy. We should do on location. That's yes. what I was saying about doing it at the winery. That would have been really fun. We've got we've got a couple of places, and actually, they were really excited. They wanted. I was like, "That's what I said. I suggested that you had called them the day before, and you were like, no, that would take too much effort.' Blah, I, blah, blah, blah. I, I didn't want to tear it all down just to get down there and then be like, oh, we're really busy and we can't accommodate you.' I literally said we should try to talk to them ahead of time. I didn't say just show up with the shit. <laughs> they can't say no if you just show up with it. Uh, I mean, you just start setting up yeah. and then be like, Jimmy said we could do it. Like, oh, Jimmy. I don't think I answered the phone. His name was Jimmy. Yeah. He said I could do it. Yep. Yep. No, it, it seems like family run, low key, like it would have been a great spot. Well, it was, it was coincidental too because the guy that was up there by the register, when we asked the question, the lady was like, oh, yeah, you just talked to him. He was like, all right, so what do you guys think? Should we do an on-location episode? Pat wants to do an episode. Scott wants to, just do, uh, to do an episode. Well, Pat, we can do it at his bar. Yeah. So that's, that's like, Scott, easy. And Scott wants to do one at Locals. But right, so we can do it at his bar. 
So they, they, we, we don't have to ask anybody. But it's bringing <clears throat> all your shit. Yeah. So I guess test it at Pat's probably first and then Locals because Locals is a shit show. Let's be real. Yeah. I'll drink a beer and watch you. Okay. At a bar. Well, Scott was like, why don't you guys do an episode here, a uh, film here? And I'm like, where? Yeah. Like set up on a pool table? <laughs> Do it from the gym. Well, you know, all kinds of people you could have on. But you, come here. That, well, yeah, no, that's isn't I mean. there like a whole movement of, oh my God, he was staring at me while I was filming myself, shaking my ass in front of my a lot selfie of the, camera. A lot of those people are really are trying to go out of their way to victimize themselves. Right, that's but, what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, let's not take cameras into the gym and have that happen is what I'm getting at. Start with, just start with the opposite way. So you're like... The desk. Sit in front of the desk. But then you might as well not be in the gym at that point. Well, no, but you get people as they're coming in and out. Like, hey, come here. Let me ask you a couple trick hey, questions. Hey, random person. You yeah. want to be on camera right you give now? Give me the finger snap. Come here. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I know that you came to the gym to work out, there's, but give me five minutes of your time. There's plenty of dudes in there that will get right on there. Yeah. Tell you all about a workout. I think we would hear some life stories, yes, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe some inspirational ones. Okay, okay. There's some people at, uh, was it 24 Fit, whatever. Forever 24 Fit, I think is what it's yeah. called. There were a couple of people in there that were like really just normal people. Then there were people in there that were super high motor and would like, there was the one guy, a shorter guy, he would go and hit a set on like squat or bench, like, Really fast. He would do eight to 12 reps, whatever. He would hit that, and then he'd be in a conversation with a new person for like five minutes. And then pull on a bare back. And he'd be on the squat rack on the bench real yeah. quick. And then and he would be, spend like three hours there. Yeah. Because yeah, and then he'd be he right back up in a conversation with somebody completely different. Mm-hmm. I'd be, every time I'd be in there, I'm like, got my headphones in and stuff like that. And I just can't hear you. Try to avoid him. Don't look. Don't make eye contact. I don't make eye contact because I don't want to talk to him. Yeah. I got a limited amount of time in the morning. I got to get a bunch of stuff in. Yep. And I'm not, I can't. Dude, like, at, so going back to PCSP, that is what it is, right? PC, yeah, PCSP. Um, His brain really is not working today. No. There's like nobody there. When there's, and it's huge, it's a massive warehouse building. And, but when there's like five people in there, I'm already like starting to get like, damn it, just too many people. But there's literally three or five of everything, yeah. and they're never using all of them. But it's just like I don't even want to be at a bench next to you. I want it's like the the men's bathroom meme, right? The urinals. Yeah, you I want one. I want you to be all the way over here, and I'm going to be all the way over here, and then you fill in from the middle. Every other. Yeah, every other. What happens if you end up having to pee next to each other? Does the world end? Well, it's a little strange. Yeah. It's a little strange. If, well, if there's you no offer to like hold each other, go to the, oh, yeah, it's a double Dutch rudder. Yeah. Wait, what? That's a thing? <laughs> no, you, you never saw uh, Zach and Mary make a porno? The movie, Zach and Mary make a porno? It's a Seth Rogen movie yeah. from like 2000. It came out while I was in Korea. You should watch it. Double Dutch rudder. He's like, I'm holding yours, you're holding mine. So, technically. <laughs> Watch it, it's funny. Okay. Watch it. We'll watch it. it we have it. It obviously shaped your life. Yeah. The trajectory. Yeah, Whoever heard of this? So that's another movie to add to our list. We were talking about the Ben Stiller. I don't need to ever see that. No, it's a good, it's a funny movie. Yeah, it's, it's a funny movie. It's, it's, it's actually funny. Okay. She won't ever watch any movie that I suggest. Correct. And then he forces me to watch it anyway. So and then, then you like I'm like, wow, I just wasted an hour and a half of my time. It's like broccoli. There's been a couple where no, I could I'll tell. No, broccoli. There's been a couple movies that I could tell that she liked, but then she had to like. Wasn't going to admit it? Put on a straight face. Oh, yeah. no. I'm going to bed now. That wasn't funny. Put the way up. She was like. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Happens all the time. Nope. Yep. Nope. Um, did you see Deadpool yet? No. <gasps> no. What? No. Dude, don't have time. And then now it's the great storm of 2024. Dude, you gotta watch it. I keep hearing I gotta watch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I can meet you at the movie theater. So I'm 
I actually don't even want to go back and see it in the theater because the Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 versions that I have um, are like the, they're the extended slash director's cut. So they're like even more, it's not like, they're not like NC-17 or unrated territory, but they're like, the jokes are just even better. And now that I've seen this version, I want to see the director. Cooper said he wants to see it again in theaters. But I want to see, so, okay, the fight scene with uh, Juggernaut in Deadpool 2, right? Mm. In the main version, they're singing like one song, like the background opera type right. singing. And in the version that I have, they're saying, oh, holy shit balls, it's the fucking Juggernaut. Like, it's like, the, but it's like opera. Yeah. And if you're not actually listening, it just sounds like people opera singing. But that's what they're singing is, oh, holy shit balls, it's the fucking Juggernaut. And it just sounds funnier because it's an opera. It's, yeah, like everything, all the jokes, every, it's gorier. I mean, this guy, they got away with a lot in this. I don't know if you saw the joke in the, the trailer, uh, the cocaine joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually, that was actually in the movie. I thought that it was in the trailer because they couldn't put it in the movie, but it's in the movie. And there's even more versions. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to watch it. We'll go. It's good. It's very good. Maybe we'll go this weekend. It's on, it's on my Mount Rushmore movies now. Yeah? Yeah. Bullet Train. That's up there now from last year. Have you watched that? The Gentleman. No. The Gentleman is my number one. I know. That's I'm why big, I said uh, it. Halloween movie fan. You are? Yeah. All of why? Series. Well, I love them. Interesting. I haven't seen any I've of them. I've never seen them. You've never seen any of them? Mm -mm. They, they did that whole thing where like, they were like really good, and then they were just like capitalizing off of it. And it got yeah, done. it started to get squirrely, and then and then they you know reset it in like 2018. Yeah, the last one was filmed here. Yeah, the one before the last one. Oh, I didn't know there was another one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whoops. They've been Same. coming out with like <laughs> Halloween, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends for the okay. trilogy that Danny McBride. Made. I thought it was the last one. So there's like <laughs> there's like 45 Alien movies now. Oh, whatever. there's a. Yeah, all the Halloween. I think they're doing like a new Freddy Krueger or something like that. Or maybe it came out. Uh, I heard, yeah, I heard that. I heard they want to do a new Friday the 13th, but there's something with uh, Jason character, some kind of dispute between two companies about who actually owns the character or something. So that sucks. Because then it's... I never saw any of them. Oh, what? What is going on she, over here? She's afraid of scary. I haven't watched any scary movies in a long he time. He says that I'm uncultured. <laughs> like and like even Saw. There's like what eleven Saw movies now. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. Saw zero. I saw the first one. Did you see it in theater or? No, I had a sleepover. Ah, sleepover or? What is quotation? Girlfriends or snuck off? Yeah. With a boy. No, <laughs> I had a sleepover. Ah. I also saw The Ring at a sleepover. That still haunts me. The Ring. Yeah. She definitely still visits me in the shower. That's, you should watch the Halloween movie. No, thank you. Talking about the ghost visiting you in the shower, have you seen that meme? Mm -hmm. Which one? It's a, it's a guy in the shower, and then he has a heart attack, and he like grabs his heart, and he like his body collapses, but his like ghost soul or whatever is still there, and he turns around, and there's like a dozen ghosts behind him, and they're all like... We weren't here! <laughs> Promise, we weren't watching you shower. Yep. I've told that to the kids before, and like, like jokingly, but then do you I believe in ghosts? Yeah, I do. You're, you're Catholic, right? Or just yeah. Yeah. Catholic? Yeah. Dumbest question ever, Andrew. Yeah, yeah I well, believe in ghosts too. He doesn't, and he makes fun of me. No, I do. I do. I don't. But, but you believe in aliens? Well, I don't believe in them. I just. Literally can't rule them out. We, we're never going to find out in our lifetime, okay. so effectively, I don't. So you can't yeah. rule out ghosts either? Mm, if there were ghosts, we'd probably know. We do know. We don't know. We think I, we know. You can ask which of us time uh, after um, we're sitting at my, at my aunt's house, and we were talking about my great aunt. 
And while we were talking. New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey. We're still in New Jersey. While we were talking, a candle on top of the TV fell off onto the floor, right? And it wasn't like on the edge. It was in the middle of the box on the TV onto the floor. Was it lit? Hmm. No. And it was her house and you guys were talking about her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only time that I've ever had a legitimate experience that I can't explain. But there's a potential explanation that I was just being pranked by my dad still to this day. Mm. Was I was sleeping or I woke up. I used to wake up before my dad would get out for work. And then I would go out to the living room, hang out with him while I watched the weather or whatever before he left. And I went out and I was sitting, uh, you know, in like the three-piece living room. So you had the chair with the ottoman and the love seat on the couch, rather than everybody has a sexual now. And I'm sitting in the, the chair, my feet up, and I like fell asleep. The TV was off and everything like that. And we had that big standing, like probably more like 45, 15 inch TV, but, like the big massive DLP, so it's like yeah. reverse projection. Yeah, yeah. Gigantic monster sitting in the living room floor and sitting there asleep like I just dozed off and the TV turned on and I woke up to it being on and my dad swears that he did not get up and turn it on. This is the only time anything like that's ever happened to me. What? You never know. Exactly, you never know. Well, one no, day you'll know. Yeah, I was going to say we'll know one day, but mm. for now we don't. Um. So I, I do kind of have a theory on that. I don't think that everybody leaves behind energy. I think that... Why can't ghosts be people from, or not even people, but something from another dimension or world that's like in between? Look at you. No, I'm asking, like, why can't that be the explanation? I don't know. Anything's possible, I guess. Okay. It's just as easy to call them aliens, then. Right. Look, I <laughs> looked at the camera because I was about to say, look at him going back to aliens. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's basically 100% chance that there are, somewhere, are some somewhere. The problem is what most people in pop culture... Define aliens as like humanoid humanoid people that can walk around and communicate. But it's probably just fucking bacteria. Oh, the government knows. Probably. I know. Dude, that oh my god. Do you remember the storm area fifty one from a couple years ago? Mm. Yeah. I wonder what happened to those people. People are like, do it, do it. Yeah. Do it. It's gonna be a great idea yeah. to do it. Yeah, I should do that. Did you do you remember that? Vaguely. It was like, I think it was during COVID, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah they had yeah. nothing better to do. Yeah. So Everybody yeah. went bonkers, divorced, or became alcoholics. I did none of those things. I got married. I get, well, I got in a relationship and I got married. Yeah. I didn't lose my mind. How lucky you are. Yeah. So lucky. You are. You're the, the luckiest. You're the luckiest woman of COVID. <laughs> you are my COVID infection. There you go. Perfect. Well, you two infected each other. Look at that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's nice. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. But the period, not an exclamation point. That's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Well, you want these people to find you on social media or do you want to? No, I'm never on social media. Okay, don't, don't look for them. Won't even say <laughs> his last name. I don't even want the government to know where I'm at. Yeah. We actually. We call him Tilapia because it's easier to pronounce than his real last name. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful fish. Yeah. Um, so before we go off talking about people's names, I, uh, I told Nona a while back that uh, you know that I respect you if I call you by your real name rather than like some weird name. But there's like a handful ex- of exceptions. I have a buddy that lives in Charlotte. His last name is Volpicelli. And... I just, I look at it, and I'm like, it looks like Bola Chili. And that's your <laughs> name now. Your name is Bola Chili. <laughs> so for two people, the exception is an endearing yeah. nickname yeah. rather than you're a piece of shit. That's why I'm calling you yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. The exceptions to the rules. You just identify people by something they're wearing. Red shirt. Come here. <laughs> yeah. 
Or, hey, you. Come here, pants. <laughs> <laughs> Haircut. Well, yeah. this was my birthday episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And from the time you guys are watching this, it's two days after. So, drop a comment. Two days after? This comes out on Thursday, which is the 8th. Oh, the way that you just said it made it sound like this comes out two days after my birthday. No. My birthday is two days after this episode. Well, there episode will be an episode out. two days after your birthday. Monday's episode. Yes, and this is not Monday's episode. This is Thursday's episode. We'll just make both episodes your birthday. And blah, 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 blah. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, with thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, Thank proud, you. I'm proud that uh, your hand didn't burn or melt off. Old Wait, enough. what? It did. Oh. It is. It was a little uncomfortable, but uh, powered through. Powered through. You power checked it. <laughs> well, um, any last words? No, I think we've covered it all. all right. He gets to go home to his beautiful wife. Yeah, yeah we have. We're, sorry, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. No, thank you, Felicia. Oh, no, the joke is we're signing up. Bye, Felicia. She's going to love that. <laughs>